Welcome to this new Flight Simulator update movie. In this movie we're going to look at the release notes of Sim Update number 12 which is currently in beta. It's the first build which has been released to the wider public uh, and contains a lot of updates. Uh, there are still, I would say, one thing which is not included and that's the WASM support on the Xbox. However, that's being, I would say, planned in Sim Update number 12 but currently it's not available in this uh, specific build. What's available? Well, a lot of bug fixes and changes. As you can see, there are tons of aircrafts which they have updated. The Airbus 310, the Bell uh, 407 helicopter, the Curtis GN4, also known as the Jenny, the Douglas DC-3, and several other ones. Uh, so let's go to the uh, list and then see what they, they changed. Right. So first of all, it contains several bug fixes uh, for previous world updates. So as you know, right, tomorrow it's D-Day. It's the next world update release. Uh, the world update takes place in New Zealand. Uh, that one will be uh, released tomorrow. But this one, which comes after the world update, uh, will contain bug fixes for the previous world updates, which means, I would say, world update number 11 and before. Right? So that's something which you uh, need to keep in mind. What are known issues currently? Well, there's a regression bug for the gamepad presets. Some access might feel unresponsive because of a bug. And that's currently being investigated as well as the glider slows down during the winch procedure right the winch procedure is when you're going airborne right to take off there is a slowdown and that will have an effect of course on the climb rate of your aircraft then there are some new contents plus features with some updates there are always new features which are being announced uh, in some cases they will uh, fix some stuff in other cases they will improve some stuff and in this case it's most mostly i would say improvements which they have added and that specifically has to do with the checking for updates right if you start flying simulator it says checking for updates that sometimes takes a, let's say a long time that's being improved as well as the download manager and the installation manager right the download speed if you install for example an update it will start downloading the updates by the installation manager and that sometimes took I would say, a long long time in addition to that, they improved the loading time before booting to the main menu. That sometimes also took some a longer time, although I think it has already been improved, uh, say, based on the last updates. It went, went already pretty fast, but looks like they spent some more time on fixing that. Then there's a new assistance option to customize the intensity of the turbulence experience during flights, right? So if you've got turbulence, there was no way to uh, customize it. But now it is. And that's something which has been requested by a lot of people. As you can see, there are a lot of people upvoting this one. As well as the uh, two languages which have been added, both Turkish and Korean, have been added uh, in the sim. So there are more languages available. Continuing with the general bug fixes. The general bug fixes are the bug fixes which are applicable to, I would say, most of the aircrafts, but also generic to the uh, sim itself. First of all, there's the purchase flow. In uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator, Flight Simulator Marketplace, which contained some bugs, that's something they fixed. Also, they fixed the shortcut to toggle the screen narrator on or off. Right, screen narrator helps you if you get, I would say, um, difficulty seeing the screen. You can switch on the screen narrator, which will help you. Uh, control options menu stops uh, reset to top when assigning a button. Right, so there were some issues with assigning buttons as well as the uh, set departure arrival and the zoom to details are now appearing when the aircraft icon is clicked. Right, if you open the VFR map, you could click on the airport, but then you st uh, would say still needed to go into it, uh, and I would say show set it as departure. Uh, however, I set the VFR map, but what I was mentioning was the world map. So they made some enhancements to that, so you can now easier select the uh, the airport uh, icon information. Then there's a fix where the aircraft is uh, was not visible uh, with their interior and exter exterior model. That was something I didn't see, but I heard some other people reporting this issue, so that's good. Talking about that, they also fixed the purple texture on their glass cockpits, right? So. The glass cockpits, if you play in multiplayer, then you sometimes saw the weird purple textures and uh, that is now being fixed. This is something which was also uh, visible, I would say, 
in previous release of Flight Simulator 2020, uh, but nowadays it's I would say less frequent, but sometimes you see it. Uh, the other things which are fixed is the engine governor being incorrectly labeled, as well as the they fixed the spoiler set key name and description. Uh, they fixed game freeze during boot, and they added parameter to the config file to allow uh, you to use the Lexi flight model integration of the uh, accelerations. Uh, and those accelerations were sometimes wrong, uh, which was uh, I would say would result in the GeForce calculations to also be incorrect. But that's specifically for the Lexi flight model, right? So the recommendation is to use the modern flight model, but in some cases, some developers are recommending you to use the Lexi flight model. Last item in this section is the integrated collision constraint response into the force calculation for GeForce estimation when on the ground, right? This uh, allows to have 1.0 when still on ground, even with some suspension systems that don't have enough force to counter gravity. So it looks like that they did something for the collision piece where they optimized this. Continuing with the navigation traffic or navigation and traffic. So this is again a long list. As you can see, the word which is I would say kind of popular and dominating in this list is fixed, right? So the fix a lot for the live traffic planes, right? Both doing uh, taxiing, but also uh, they were following the incorrect uh, departure procedures as well as they were completely stuck on some of the holds or on some of the runways. So that's good to see because if you hit that issue then you could wait forever and ever until you could use that runway. Uh, in addition to that what they did is they fixed the glass bit cockpit uh, externalization has been reworked. There's no intermediate window anymore so each glass Cockpit opens a distinct window in the gloss cockpit name, right? So window position and size is safe when ending a flight. That's, I would say, the other benefit, right? If you formed some customizations and if you closed the flight and started the flight, then you needed to redo everything, but that has now been fixed. As well as the multi-layout screen cockpits, right? The mouse collision for the gloss cockpit exter externalization is now received only by the current active gloss cockpit. So some good stuff. And uh, the nav lock timer no longer resets when the user closes and reopens it, right? The nav lock timer, sometimes you're using that for VFR flights to measure, okay, how long did I fly in a certain direction? That's now being fixed, as well as the sim connect injected traffic planes of following the assigned flight plan. And that's really interesting because if we scroll down further in this list, you will see that they made several uh, changes to the sim, sim connect piece. So the SIM Connect looks to be one of those components which received a lot of updates as part of this, I would say, beta version of SIM update number 12. Uh, the next thing which they fixed for the SIM Connect was also the injected traffic being often unable to depart from the departure gate. And that could result in that you've got a lot of airplanes stuck at the gate and could not, I would say, depart. Um, live traffic planes, we already discussed them, but I'm not going to go all over them because there are so much fixes for that. They fixed a, a crash where HC uses an invalid runway number, and there are two fixes for the glass cockpit. Right, the waypoints with no associated city now show up as an empty city uh, field instead of the random characters, and navigation data expiration year is now properly being displayed when the data range uh, extends over two years. So some minor fixes and some huge fixes. Continuing with the VFR map. Right, they fixed an issue where the plane's CDI source uh, should uh, would change when opening the VFR map, and that CDI source is really important if you're using the autopilot, right? Then it would even cause the autopilot to switch off in some cases. Uh, that's not being fixed, so if you can now safely open the VFR map and still keep the original CDI source. The other thing is they optimized the uh, memory usage, so they're gonna reduce the memory usage uh, based on this, uh, let's say, title, right, or on this item. Then, continuing with the weather, they fixed a cloud popping issue when updating live weather data and they fixed a problem with, with uh, where in what presets water would be iced for the physics but displayed as water in the rendering. So that's really weird, <laughs> but yeah, they fixed that. Uh, in addition to that, they uh, the heat only thermals are limited and heat up uh, to the cloud base, right, except on the clouds. And the cloud thermals are limited in the heat up of the uh, up to the cloud, looks like these are a little bit the same, I'm not sure. But looks like they did a lot with thermals because here you can see a trend also. Again, thermals, they reduced the th thermals close to the ground and they improved the thermal slanting and cloud alignment. 
The other two options, the reduced blue hot ground thermals in rain and the reduced mountain turbulence with altitude. So they fixed several, let's say, weather things, uh, mostly related to thermals, right? Which are, I would say, good for you if you are, I would say, using the, the gliders. Uh, so expect, I would say, a better experience when using the gliders. Then there are a few activities which were fixed. The first one was that there were various issues on the legs starting the bush trips, as well as the training activities are now recorded in the logbook. And that was not always the case, and I do think that, it, that this might be an advantage, especially when some of the cases res will result in a reset of the, of the training activities, which I would say caused that you need to redo all of them. And hopefully with this change, since they're now written to the logbook, uh, you don't need to redo uh, it once an update is installed. Uh, if you're using the uh, P51 uh, in the Reno Air races, they're fixed, they fix an issue where it could run out of fuel, and they fix an issue which could cause the engines to shut down uh, when first starting a mission. Never have had this one, but could potentially be. Well, then to the glass cockpits, right? The glass cockpits, those are the German Garmin G3000, G5000, the G1000 NXI, and the Garmin GNS 430W and 530W. All are developed by the previous team of working title, right? So do expect that you will see a lot of uh, those fixes coming from their team. Uh, so it's always recommended to use the official build and not the working titles anymore. Uh, that's also what they mentioned in their uh, release notes in most cases. Uh, as you can see, the G3000 got the most updates because the G1000 NXI only has one, as well as for the GNS 430. Uh, for the 430, right, let's start at the bottom. It fixed some uh, page navigation issues where the right knob push uh, would not close dialogs. And for the GNS or G1000 NXI, they fixed an issue that caused the G1000 NXI to pen very slowly in legacy integration mode. The G3000 has a lot of fixes, right? First of all, the render list, when the number of items in the list was very large. Uh, I think that has, that has to do with the flight plan, if I'm correct. And it fixed various instances where the FMS, the flight management system, would not automatically tune the primary approach frequency when loading or activating ILS, LOC, LDA, SD, F, VR approaches. Well, this is really important because if you don't tune in, well, you can't use them and you can't use them uh, as a benefit for, I would say, the landing part. Then the G2C airport information page, right? That's the page where you can see the information about the airport. It now also shows uh, the primary approach frequencies for all the approaches uh, at the airport in the frequency tab. That's very useful because uh, you can, of course, uh, depend on the automatic tuning of the radio. But how cool is it that you can look up the frequencies yourself and configure them yourself? Now we've got the PFD traffic inset map uh, ranges labels are now always displayed in the bottom left to avoid conflicts with other uh, map elements. Right, that PFD primary uh, flight display that contained an inset map where you could display the map. And in some cases, when you switch on too many options, there was an overlay of the text where which resulted in that the text was not, I'd say, really cool to see. Also, they fixed the long approach names where well, overflowing uh, the approach button, right? There's an approach button. In some cases, the approach names were overflowing, so that could result in that the approach button was not correctly shown. And uh, there are uh, miscellaneous uh, map memory optimizations. So, do expect that the memory uh, usage for uh, aircraft using this cockpit are better. The last Three items over here are all bugs which uh, are fixed. So the route direct two is incorrectly inherited the turn direction, their target legs, and they're fixed a bug where the initial course of an en route direct two was set in true degrees instead of the expected magnetic degrees. Well, could be a huge difference. Last one, they fixed the bug where the flight plan will become corrupted when syncing a world map flight plan with an approach and at least one en route waypoint, but no departure or arrival. Okay. This, I think this is a very special scenario, right? Normally you won't do it, but hey, it can be. The last item, the advanced VNAV lo no longer tries to capture the decent altitude constraints during climb phase. So during climb phase, it will not longer try to uh, capture the decent uh, altitude constraints. Well, that's cool. Going to the aircrafts. The aircraft also received a lot of updates. First of all, there are the generic updates, right? Which are, I would say, some of them. 
they fixed the load uh, percentage to display the correct individual engine power and they fixed the bug on the WASM and TS glass cockpits using the zero pitch line of the PFD line represented the zero percent of the aircraft and they fixed the control effects on some planes uh, also they fixed some issues with the lights on the Boeing 747 and A320 as well as an issue which uh, is resulting in the left and right axis brake set to incorrectly affect both brakes, right? So that's the, key, the mapping of your keyboard or mouse or whatever you're using to control flight simulator was incorrectly mapped. Uh, then we've got the P-51, the Bunny and the Miss Virginia, they had some issues. One of them was uh, correct an issue where the, uh, the display the widescreen instead of the radio and there was a landing gear door animations are now working correctly. So some minor tweaks for the aircraft. Last one, the external HUD. The variometer is not no longer displayed on the external HUD uh, when not relevant to the aircraft. Uh, well, that makes sense. Uh, continuing with the helicopters, some small fixes, although they could have a huge impact. The engine power jump was reduced during the governor activation. Right? There was a power jump where you could see that the say, power of the engines really increased, and that has now been fixed. As well as they added an engine trimmer, right? Uh, and that depends on the helicopter, you can see it here, right? If the helicopter has this feature, it's now possible to slightly change the uh, nominal engine rotor RPM uh, that the governor is trying to maintain, right? Here it also says that you need to refer to the new input command, so you might need to set up a new uh, shortcut, which is the engine trim RPM increase or the engine trim uh, RPM decrease. And you'll find it in the control options menu, right? Where you define the shortcuts for, for example, for your keyboard. Uh, then they made some changes to the throttle control logic for multi-engine helicopters. Uh, it's now more consistent, as well as the fixed tail rotor increment for better controllability with the gamepad. Well, if you're using game gamepad, kudos for you, because I can imagine that this might be pretty hard to fly a helicopter using the gamepad. The Boeing 747. They fixed an issue where it could prevent a part of the speed brakes from properly triggering on the 747. Well, speed brakes are really important with uh, such a large aircraft, so that's cool. The Cabri G2, right? Another helicopter. The start mode behavior improved on the EPM, as well as several pages uh, in the, I would say, navigation system, which are now uh, being worked correctly, as well as the throttle handle animation is now working correctly. And there are two fixes for the Myro Drift on ground contact with helicopters and they fix the Kauri skid suspension settings. So the Kauri now is stable on the ground. Really important. Then probably my favorite aircraft, the Chestnut 172 Skyhawk G1000. And that's probably where most of us will start flying with. It has now the fixed ground steering during takeoff to compensate crosswind. Uh, you might have experienced it when uh, using a flight simulator. The Chestnut. Citation CD4. Well, again, a lot of fixes, right? For the MFD, the battery electrical indications always showing zero. There was an issue where the electrical indications always show zero when uh, with for the fixed battery, which wasn't correct. And they also fixed the altitude capture not engaging in the uh, TO vertical mode. Uh, they disabled the unused COM3 receiver and adjust the brightness of the standby connector, which was sometimes was a little bit hard to see. Uh, the angle of attack indicator, right, AOA, uh, not indicating the correct AOA, that's been fixed as well as the uh, SIM, was, uh, SIM checklist was stuck in the after starting the engines checklist. Well, never experienced that one, but hey, if it's, I would say if you're depending on a checklist, which is part of the, uh, the aircraft, that might be pretty nasty. Uh, next fix is the wrong state indication on the APTR, right, the approach button tooltip. Uh, so that's a nice fix. And the FMC, it, it has now fixed arrivals page not working when airport, airport features approaches not tied to a specific runway. It is also probably a very special issue. FMC, they fixed the discontinu discontinuity spilling up uh, when editing uh, procedures, uh, as well as what they did is they uh, it now disables the uh, yaw damper if you press the uh, YD slash AP disc bar, right? That's to disable the autopilot, but now also disables the yaw damper. So be aware of that. Three fixes. One for the overspeed warning audio does not always work. Well, that's sometimes irritating, right? Because you want to be warned about uh, if you're going too fast. And the direct to initial course being co incorrect. 
last picks uh, where the FMA <coughs> would always show a uh, lock one VR one, even when the source was an F two. Mm. Last item for the Cessna CG four is the to go uh, button on the thrust leveler is now active, so that's something which you could try, right? If you're flying the aircraft. Now we've got these uh, Cessna Citation Longitude, and you can see this is again a long list, right? So I'm gonna speed up a bit because going to all those items is a lot, and I will post the link to this release notes also in the description of the video. So first of all, they made it easier to uh, use the Ctrl E and the Ctrl Shift E, right, to switch on the engine or switch off the engines, and they fixed the ailerons left right key event, uh, commanding ailerons in the opposite direction as intended. This Probably specific if you uh, are using, uh, say, keyboard, not home sensor. And they fixed the incorrect uh, pedal tilt logic, uh, which was, I think I experienced it because it showed some errors and then you needed to switch it on and then it was gone. But I think it was not home mandatory to switch it on. Incorrect. Uh, then they fixed the standby instruments and now automatically adjust uh, its backlight uh, levels, right? So that you don't, I would say, have, I would say, uh, almost a Christmas tree in your aircraft. And the auto throttle uh, no longer requires gear and flaps to be retracted to change from TO mode to speed climb or decent modes. Cool. Taxi auto tests now require engines running to begin evaluating. Makes sense. And they fixed a few things the broken external animations for non default deliveries, and they fixed incorrect load station count in a config file. And they adjusted the passenger uh, load positions to match the standard 8 seat configuration. Never be never played with that and was not even aware that there was an issue with that. Last two items uh, there's the increase and the elevator trim level uh, limit to prevent the autopilot from trim from running out of trim authority at low altitudes and high speeds and to fix the AFCS control uh, panel, the APR button tooltip. So again, an APR uh, tooltip fix. Then the DR TBM 930. Multiple fixes, including the maximum nose wheel steering angle to 28 degrees. Well, I'm wondering how, how they figured out that it was a bug, right? Uh, someone with, I would say, probably with a lot of knowledge of this aircraft uh, has reported this one. And they increased uh, the speed at, with, uh, at which the nose wheel steering starts becoming less effective to 10 knots, right? So uh, if you're going hard, faster than 10 knots, then it might not work, and the nose wheel might not work as optimal as it should be. Uh, also, they increase the brightness of taxi and landing lights, so lights or densities has in, uh, increased, and the pulse uh, lights no longer draw additional power when landing lights are on. Okay. Okay, so fix for uh, non-default deliveries, and they fix the handling of the electrical battery e key events. Right, the key events simply keys which you're using on your keyboard to uh, manage the uh, electrical ba battery, there are some fix for that. As well as the improved compatibility with hardware that send electrical battery and external power key events every frame. Not sure which hardware it is, but there is hardware which probably does that. And again, the AFCS control panel APR button tooltip, as we saw for the other aircrafts. Then the Dark Star, they fix several issues related to entering a frequency on the transponder of the Dark Star, and they fix the external camera display now rotates without stretching the view. Cool. The DG100E. Again, a lot of improvements in this case, right? There are no fixes, but they call it improvements. Uh, improvements with the stall to match the stalling uh, characteristics at, as described in the flight manual, as well as the Improved adverse yaw balance, handling qualities, and uh, spoiler drag. And of course, the wing launch now requires a technique as described in the manual. Uh, doing, and that's, I say, specific. If you're familiar with the aircraft, you probably uh, know what they mean with this. I don't know because I'm, I, I've tried to fly with these aircrafts a few times, I would say, in flight simulator, but I must say, I still need to uh, practice a little bit more. The LS8 improved the adverse yaw stall and spoiler uh, drag. So, um, say, it looks like a little, almost the same as this one, right? And that's what they fixed in all the aircraft. So, a lo lot of fixes, right? Are we there yet? No, we're not, because now we're coming to the world. So, 
First of all, they fixed a lot of taxiways uh, across multiple airports, uh, HECA, SPGL, LFPG, uh, and they fixed also some incorrect airport names in Australia. Uh, there was the uh, Queenstown Airport and ZQN, not updated with World Update uh, 12. Well, it's already cool because they already know that they will cause an issue with World Update 12. Uh, or is it sad, okay, hey, this airport is not part of World Update 12, but it will contain a fix in Sim Update number 12. Hmm. Well, difficult discussion, right? Well, let's see. At least uh, if you're missing it in after World Update number 12, be aware that in Sim Update number 12, we will fix it. Um, and there was one for the uh, Higa, there's a terraforming issue on the taxiway, right? So a lot of taxiway issues and some incorrect names. Then there are some new uh, peripheral uh, issues fixed. Uh, for First of all, the Toby eye tracker not being detected when the sim starts up on the monitor. It has no uh, not set up to use it. So for those who are using the Toby eye tracker, good news. And it changed the mapping of buttons 55 and 56 on the Alpha Flight Controls uh, XPC, as well as they made a change to the T Flight's Hot Ass X uh, helicopters uh, mapping to be the same as the uh, T Flight Hot Ass 1 uh, for the helicopters. So good. Then there's also a new supported device. It's the MBS 015U flight stick from Hori is now fully supported, so that's good. With those controls, there are sometimes some new presets, and in this case, uh, I think this is the first time I see this in release notes, is that they have added a few presets for the TCA Side Stick X Pilot, the T Flight Hollows 1, as well as the SciTech Pro Flight X56 and the SciTech X52, as well as the T Flight Stick X. So some new profiles presets and that makes it easy to switch to a uh, different configuration modes right if you're flying in helicopters you might want to have a different configuration profile compared to flying for example uh, Boeing 747 makes sense right then some new controls they added the set uh, recognition lights the added in-flight UI panel zoom axis the engine trim RPM decrease and increase right these two were already discussed earlier and there's the added toggle wind fold uh, to the available mapping list so some new controls so likely uh, you can say connect those two keys or maybe you're using a stream deck to control your aircraft that's now all available then there are a few uh, peripheral fixes for the gamepad but also uh, for the uh, CH fighter stick as well as the trust master TCA yoke I'm not gonna go to each of them but there are several X's uh, fixes uh, the bottom three are I would say likely applicable to you if you're playing on a flight uh, or flight simulator on the Xbox and in those cases there were also now some fix for that uh, so cool to see first reality audio sound audio not heard stops playing after exiting VR mode well sometimes you also have that the HC mode does not work but that's a different issue and there's a fix of the culling issue on low frame rate with FOV close to 180% causing frames to not render. Hmm. Last two fixes, low latency option not working in the VR mode and they force the no post post effects in the VR mode. So if you're in VR mode, there are some fixes in for you. Then the SDK, we're not gonna go to it, but I want to go to this, I would say sim connect part, right? Because the sim connect part, although it's a development thing, it looks like that there is coming some new things to the uh, sim connect right they added the new fields to the nav data api as well as new function to sim connect uh, request jetway data uh, and they added a new tool to debug sim connect well this one is not likely something for us but the other two might be something which uh, i would say external i would say vendors might be using in their new solutions and you or we as i would say flight sim, uh, players or pilots uh, might benefit from this so cool to see a lot of fixes uh, also in the development tools but again right we're not going to them uh, was them still need to wait if you're playing on the Xbox uh, then you can't get it yet so sim update number 12 the release notes right it will bump up the version to version 1.31.18.0 and you need to subscribe via the Xbox uh, tool if you want to participate in the beta be aware that in some cases it will uh, reset the uh, flight simulator and will require full reinstall flight simulator so it's 
I would say strong recommendation to move all the community folder content and all the other content in a special folder and then redirect to that folder because that will not trigger the, uh, I would say, well, it will trigger the reinstall, but it will prevent you from downloading all the stuff which is in both the community folder as well as in the store folder. Here ends this video where we went to all the stuff which will be fixed as part of sim update number 12. And this is the beta version, right? Because we still need to wait for, I would say, a little bit longer because they delayed uh, sim update number 12. Uh, due to some issues they, uh, they probably experienced. Tomorrow is the big day for the next world update, world update number 12, and it will bring us New Zealand. So keep an eye on my channel because I will definitely post some new videos tomorrow. Here ends this video. Thanks for watching. I uh, hope to see you again. If you would like to stay up to date about new videos I'm posting, then make sure that you subscribe to my channel. And of course, if you've got any questions or comments, then feel free to post them in the comment box below. Thanks again for watching and see you next time.